Hi, I'm Trey, the designer of the game, and right now we're going to take a look at the mechanics in Arjun. So, uh, so I'm Brad, I'm here with Trey, we're going to walk you through a turn. Alright, so the first thing you do is a setup phase where any spells or treasures that you use in the previous round, you will refresh them so they're available for use this round. And certain rooms of the university might have some kind of setup, like you might have to put out new items for the student store, or new spells, or new uh, supporters for the council chamber. Uh, then you will also return the bell tower offerings. If you remember from our brief overview, these determine when the round ends. When the last bell tower card is taken, that is when the round ends. So when a new round begins, you will put these cards back out. Then you begin the advanced errand phase. Here you will only be able to use specific pawns or spells, uh, ones that are for this particular phase of the game. All right, so Trey has some of the purple students, which are... Uh, planar mages who specialize in time space magic and they can place early during the advanced phase. I don't have any of these on in my board and I don't have any fast spells so I'll pass in this turn and he'll get to place all of his fast mages together with the other players who happen to have some of these faster mages. After that happens um, and everyone has passed out of this phase then we move on to the main phase which is kind of the heart of the turn. So in the main errands phase um, each player will take actions one by one around the table to determine what they're doing for the turn. So an action that you could take would be to place a mage, like so, onto the board. So, bam, there's my action. I'll place it right ahead of Trey. My blue mages are defensive and immune to spells, which will make it harder for him to knock me out of this spot and give me a higher pick at the, uh, at the supporters when the round ends. So on your turn, you can either play an apprentice or you may cast a spell. Now, I wouldn't be able to cast an offensive spell against his blue mage, but what I might do is uh, cast a spell which lets me place two of my own mages in one action. The spells have various effects, which can either be a utility effect, an offensive effect, or a defensive effect. Each spell in the game has three different levels, so one of the things that you can do is increase the level of spell and get a more powerful effect. The more you research into that spell, the more powerful it is. Yeah. So each time you research, you can either learn a new spell or you can improve one of your existing spells. And the le intelligence level that you have determines how big your spell book can be. The wisdom level you have determines how powerful, how many level ups that you can have across all spells. Aside from casting spells, you may also use vault cards or supporter cards that you've acquired in previous rounds. For example, this supporter allows you to look at two of the consortium voters. Another uh, character lets you research uh, spells from their department. Or, for example, this uh, lantern over here allows you to look at the top few cards of the supporter deck and choose one to keep secretly for yourself, giving you an advantage at the game end. And lastly, you may choose to take a bell tower offering. And remember, when the last of these cards is taken, the round ends immediately. Then there's a resolution phase. And during resolution, we resolve each room in the university one by one. Each room has different effects going from top to bottom, and typically the top effects are better. Placing in a higher spot in a room gives you more priority, but it also makes you a bigger target for other players who want to take that spot. So typically with your less defensive mages, you're going to shoot for, for stuff in the middle, or you're going to load up on powerful defensive gear and defensive spells so that you can hold those positions until the last bell tower is taken. One of the great things about this game is you can tailor your strategy to your own personal playstyle. If you want to be defensive, you don't want people to be able to mess with you, you can stock up on defensive mages and defensive spells, defensive items. If you want to be aggressive, you can do the opposite. Or if you just want to do various utility effects, you want to get your mages out faster, you want to be able to gain extra mana, you want to be able to um, slow other players down, then you can do that as well. You can play a rushdown strategy, take lots of advanced actions, and rush the bell tower really fast to deny everyone else their action turns, giving yourself more resources. You can load up on powerful spells that are going to mess up everybody so bad that they can't afford to place ahead of you and have to let you go first, there's a lot of different options that you have to, to get ahead and to take control of the university board in the main errand space. So during the course of the game, you will have a chance to mark different members of the consortium. And when you mark one, you're able to freely pick up this card and look at him over the course of the game as many times as you like. Other players will also know who you've marked and what you know, 
And they'll start to see that if you if you are stockpiling mana or stockpiling gold, that uh, that it becomes it becomes a race. If I know that gold is is a voter condition, you know that gold is a voter condition. You'll start stockpiling up gold. So one of the fun things about this game is there's there's this whole meta guessing game going on where oh I see he's getting a lot of mana or I see he's getting a lot of purple spells. So I might start copying that, thinking that he has seen that particular voter in the game. Now, I remember in the last game we played, you stocked up on intelligence points, and I saw you doing that, and so I started building up intelligence points. And a third player saw me and you doing it and thought we were in a race, and he started stocking intelligence points. And of course, when you saw me and him, you thought the same thing. And when we revealed the, the voters, there was nobody who cared how, how smart we were. And, uh, and the whole thing was a wash. Each of us had wasted almost half a turn trying in this arms race that didn't really exist. So, so the, you know, figuring out what the other players are and speculating on what the actual final conditions of the game are is a lot of the fun of it. Um, and the big reveal at the end is always a surprise and always a, uh, a big spectacular finish. Yes. It's always very tense because unless you really try for it, you're probably not going to see all of the voters. So you'll be wondering, uh, did I guess correctly? I, I saw that player taking those actions and hope that that was the voter in the game, but then it could end up being an entirely different voter if you're not very careful. Thanks for watching this video and for supporting us on Kickstarter and helping this game become a reality.